So, ah. so, so what we're going to do is we're going to launch a, hor a horizontal projectile with this ramp. So when you come up the ramp and actually look at it, you'll see that at the bottom, the bottom part is perfectly horizontal. Okay? Which means that when the ball leaves the ramp, the instant the ball leaves the ramp, it only has a horizontal speed. It doesn't have any vertical component to its speed. Does that make sense? And your job today is going to be to predict the range of the projectile. Now the range is how far it travels in the air horizontally before it hits the ground. So you're going to have to predict where it's going to land on the ground. You're actually going to place a target that looks like this. Here are some of the results from my fifth hour class. Okay, You want your ball to land exactly on the 0% error line, and you can see kind of where people were landing. I have had classes that, that do land right on the line if you're very precise with your measurements. Okay, So, um, so what we're going to do first is think about um, the ideas that we need to use in order to find the landing position of that horizontal projectile. And yesterday I talked about taking motion and dividing it into its two components, its horizontal and vertical components. Right? So let's expand on that. Um, in the horizontal direction, the motion is what? What kind of motion does the ball have? projectile have in a horizontal direction. How do we, first of all, remember when we describe motion, it could be at rest, constant velocity, constant acceleration. Constant velocity. Okay, next. There is only one formula for motion with constant velocity. What is that formula? Excellent. Displacement equals velocity, average velocity times time. Now, this is the range that we want. So what we need is we need the speed of the ball, the horizontal velocity of the ball, and we need the time that it's in the air. Okay? So let's talk about that. To get the speed of the ball, to get speed you need two things. You need displacement and you need time. But these aren't the same displacements and times. Because we really have two events here. We have the event where the ball is on the ramp, and then we have the event where the ball is a projectile and it's left the ramp. Okay? So here, um, here I'm talking about while the ball is in the air, and here I'm talking about where the ball is on the ramp. You follow me? It's really important that we are very careful about which part of the motion and which part of the event we're talking about. So let's go back now and think about the ball on the ramp. And let's take a moment and talk about how we're going to get the speed of the ball while it's on the ramp. So now we'll come over here and look at the equipment. So this is your equipment. So you've got your ramp. Um, and then you've got this thing called a photo gate. Let me take it out so I can show it to you. Um, fifth hour pretty much hooked these up, and hopefully they did it correctly. I think everything worked for us. So they've got what's called a photo gate adapter. They've got the photo gate plugged into this thing called the CBL, which essentially allows me to hook it all up to the calculator. Okay. Now, this photo gate works a lot like the electric eye on the automatic doors at a grocery store or Target or something like that. Okay. What we have here is there's two little holes, and there's an invisible beam of light that goes between these two teeth on the photo gate. And what we're going to do is when the ball goes through and breaks that beam of light, the photo gate tells us how much time it takes. And it tells us to a much higher degree of pre precision than we could do with a with stopwatch. You basically wouldn't be able to measure that with a stopwatch at all unless you were you know, Superman or something. So, um, so it's going to tell us the time it takes for the beam to be broken. Now the other piece of information that we need is we need to know the width of the ball. Okay? 
Because if you know the diameter of the ball, and you know the time that it takes the ball to pass through this photo gate, then you can divide, you can take diameter divided by time to get the speed of the ball on the ramp. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Let me take just another moment then to talk about how we are going to reduce our errors. When you set up the photo gate, it is absolutely essential that you set this thing up so that the electric eye measures against the fattest part of the ball. If you don't measure against the fattest part of the ball, you will get significant error. And I want you to think about why for a moment. If I sketch a picture of the photo gate, Okay, and we've got this invisible beam of light. So there's a hole right here and there's an invisible beam of light. And then you've got this marble basically coming through here. You need the beam of light to go across the fattest part of the marble. And you're measuring the time, again, that the, that the marble breaks that beam of light. If you were to be, if you were to have this photo gate at the wrong height and if you were measuring across here, do you guys see the problem that that would cause? Your, your velocity would be way, way, way off. So you really need to make sure that you line this thing up so this little hole goes right across the fattest part of the, of the marble. Okay? Okay. Other stuff. Let's say that you've got the velocity of the ball um, on the ramp. That's going to be the same as the initial velocity of the ball when it's in the air. And what we need now is this time. So how are we going to find the time that the ball is in the air? Do you have any ideas? Excellent. So that's vertical motion, right? So in the vertical direction, The ball behaves like a falling object, or acts like a falling object. Now, falling objects are something that we studied in chapter two. So, I want you guys to think for a second, what kind of measurement could we take in order to figure out how long it takes the ball to fall that distance? What do we need? Displacement. So we need vertical displacement, right? So you need to know the distance between the bottom of the ball and the ground. Okay. Um, the initial velocity of the ball in the vertical direction. Is there any initial vertical in the in the any initial vertical velocity? No, right? So basically we can use this one. This is what we this is the same formula that we found in the ramp lab, the Galileo lab. I'm just I've just changed some of the letters to indicate that I'm working with vertical. If I measure from the bottom of the ball to the ground and get that vertical displacement, I should be able to use g um, to calculate the time that it's in the air. So now, I've got the time that it's in the air. I've got the speed from the measurements that I took on the ramp, and now I can calculate the range of the projectile or where it's going to land. Okay, so one more thing, the ground rule. You are not allowed to let the ball go all the way off the ramp and hit the ground and see where it's going to land, because that's no fun, at least not for me. So what you're allowed to do is you are ramp and catch it, okay? If you hold it up against the screw, you, then you'll do it the same way every time, and it will have the same speed. And you'll see that when you measure your times. They'll be very, very, very close to each other. So you're allowed to do this, okay? And time it, and measure the width of this. And then based on that information, and based on measuring the height off the ground, you guys should be able to calculate where it's going to land. When you're ready to find out where it's going to land, you call me over, I, I, I bring the uh, target, we put it down, and that's the moment of truth. Okay, we see where you land on the target. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, so there's seven groups. I'd like you guys to work in your table groups.
there's seven stations around the room, and you guys uh, get started. Thank you. Big hand to Joe Pop.